The modern world is relentless. Humans consume more information in a single day than someone in the Middle Ages would their entire lifetime. Our lives are a non-stop barrage of stimulus. So I found the most extreme way to silence the noise. Sensory deprivation therapy for one month, consistently. I conducted this self-experiment at a center called Healing One, whose owner Chaz was gracious enough to let me come in on a regular basis. This is the first float tank that I'll be using um, for this week. Yeah, I don't really know what to expect. I've never really done this for an extended period of time, uh, but I'm excited to share with you guys the findings and what I experienced. I'm gonna be documenting everything and journaling and really just taking this whole month to heal and sort of process and reflect on um, a pretty intense time in my life that has just passed. Floating was unlike anything I've ever felt before. In no other place does everything you know just melt away. No sounds or sights or anything. Gravity no longer exists and your body seems to disappear. You're no longer pulled along the currents of life. It's just you and all that you are. You become the entire existing world. So that's float number one complete. I admittedly was a little bit restless. I mean, overall, just really peaceful, very calm, like nothing, nothing else in the world mattered or it didn't even feel like there was a world. I felt like I was just floating through the universe. I had the thought this might be what it feels like to be dead. I did notice a few specific sensations, joints popping and cracking. I'm usually hunched over <laughs> editing on my computer, and as soon as I got in the tank, within like seconds, I felt that like soreness in my back. I mean, the tank just, you know, you're, you're totally suspended in this salt water, so you, would, you don't have to put in any effort. It's really just like total buoyancy. Within seconds of getting in the tank, I felt that pain, and in about two, maybe three minutes, it was pretty much gone. I'm excited to see where the rest of the month leads to and how my demeanor or experience changes. Otherwise known as flotation rest, Sensory deprivation was created in 1954 by psychological researcher John C. Lilly. But it wasn't until the 70s that he built a tank for someone interested in personal use. In most recent decades, athletes like Steph Curry and prolific figures such as Joe Rogan swear by its incredible effects. Even the legend himself, John Lennon, used flotation therapy to get clean and sober. Brain scans during flotation show that the amygdala, or the fear center of the brain, is actively being regulated from overactivity. People report the resolution of past traumas, revelations, and even psychedelic experiences. The scientific studies on this topic are endless. It's been proven to help treat depression, insomnia, ADHD, rheumatoid arthritis, addictions, and even increase jazz improvisation. During flotation, the brain switches from normal beta to theta waves which occur during dreams or deep meditation. In this state, the sympathetic nervous system, which controls the stress hormone cortisol, is calmed down.
I was in a dark place at the beginning of this experiment. Having just ended a two-year relationship, almost losing my father, then actually losing my uncle shortly after, there were a lot of emotions to work through. In the tank, you're forced to face yourself and any unresolved thing you may have said or done. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel great <laughs> coming out of it, feeling pretty amazing. My chest feels very light, very airy. I guess the most surprising part about it was that I went in there and in literally what seemed like 10 minutes, it was over. And I was inside that float tank for an hour and a half. Yeah, that was the total opposite of the first week that I floated, uh, which definitely, definitely seemed like the full 90 minutes, um, if not more. Obviously didn't know which way it was like up or down or left or right. I was getting that mild feeling of constant vertigo. So it was hard to place where I was. I had it happen again where I remembered just a really, really obscure small dream that I had like two days ago that I feel like I would have forgotten about had I not floated. Would get the sensation I was floating through this cave pretty slowly forward, but the whole world was upside down. There were like statues of all these various religious figures of the world on what was either the ground or what appeared to me hanging from the ceiling. So that was pretty interesting. Let's face it, we live in a time where going to the grocery store without a smartphone creates life-threatening anxiety. People today do not see a way out of their distraction loops. They're far too enticing and easy. Most don't even realize how this damages the ability to be happy and just enjoy the present moment because it's always about what stimulus is coming next. So here is a place totally free from anything to do, say, or be. There's a reason you get so many good ideas in the shower, or right after meditation. Your mind needs space to process thoughts and formulate them into brilliance. If you focus on trivial pleasures, you'll only get trivial thoughts in return. And these surface level distractions keep you blind to what's bubbling beneath you. And that is what makes flotation so valuable in the modern era. It gives you the chance to dive deeper into yourself than you ever thought possible. In those murky depths are tangled emotions, hidden programs, buried and forgotten traumas, all of them waiting to be found. For they also contain the treasures of your soul. A great philosopher once said, the unexamined life is a life not worth living. And two generations later, the student of his student declared, knowing thyself is the beginning of wisdom. This is the first week that I was a little bit uh, nervous to come in. I was settling into my float. And maybe about 10 or 15 minutes, I noticed this dark corner where this um, scared little boy was hiding in the corner and I'd never really noticed him before. Very obviously it was me. Um, and so I just talked to him and I felt his feelings, things I hadn't felt for a really, really long time. Fear I'd been compensating for or suppressing or whatever, sort of all just sort of seemed to come up and, and I really got to notice and observe that. My initial reaction was to be like, stop being scared, stop, you are not a scared person. But then I realized I have to accept that in the past and in the present, I can be a very fearful person. So I talked to the little boy for a little bit and really just embraced him and said, you know, hey, everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty cathartic. It really does feel like I'm reaching into the deep recesses of my psyche and my subconscious. Experiences and memories and feelings that I didn't realize were still there or that I haven't thought about for like years or maybe even a decade or two um, are coming up. The big goal here for, 
you know, for this whole flotation <laughs> experiment thing and just the greater journey is to, uh, to understand myself much more deeply. And I do think that floating absolutely is becoming a catalyst for, for change and at the very least uh, a catalyst for observation. During my very last float, something incredible happened. I physically felt the sensation of being sucked through the back of my own head, and suddenly I was looking down at myself from above. Completely separated from my body, I deconstructed any idea of me, every single identity I've ever had. Son, student, lover, filmmaker, I did this until nothing was left except an infinite void, but not a bad one. It was a ringing expanse, and I could play whatever tone I wished. Then, I started weeping uncontrollably, reliving everything from my birth being strangled by the umbilical cord, to the unpredictable ride that my life had been those past few months. My whole life flashed before my eyes, and I just thanked all of it for being so.